Welcome back to Networks Tech Talk, a Samsung podcast. I'm your host, Kaylee Pickens, and we've got a great conversation for you today. Broadband or internet connectivity is almost like an essential fourth utility these days. Especially given the past year, internet access is more critical than ever. Now, how does that translate to fixed wireless access, or FWA? FWA is a scalable alternative for wired broadband, and it's an option that we expect to see accelerate when combined with 5G. Today, we will talk about FWA, where it will be used, and how it will help operators and consumers. With me today is Vinay Mahendra, Director of Engineering for the Networks Business at Samsung Electronics America, and he is here to help us understand why the FWA market is growing in popularity. Welcome, Vinay. Hey, thanks for having me, Kaylee. So the challenge to deliver high-speed broadband access to everyone has remained unsolved for several years. How does FWA help individuals and businesses get affordable access? Uh, Kaylee, the most challenging part about getting broadband to anyone is the so-called last mile. The last mile is the final stretch, the physical connection to residences and enterprises that brings the costs up so dramatically. FWA deals with this problem by making those last few hundred meters wireless, using a local transmitter to send data to many receivers, each in a different home or business. It sounds like FWA has a lot of potential. Are there any use cases that are particularly suited for FWA? There's an excellent business case for deploying FWA in rural areas with the proper funding. With houses and businesses more sparsely placed than in an urban or suburban area, getting high-speed broadband to all the people who want it can be fiercely expensive. Think about it. You have to lay fiber to all the places, dig the ground up for long distances. This can be very expensive and time-consuming. With FWA, the subscriber can get a receiver delivered to them. They can simply hook it up and get service. The federal government recently made funds available to increase the number of broadband recipients Can you tell us more about why did they do that and how FWA plays a part? The U.S. government is allocating a lot of money to bridge the digital divide between those who have affordable broadband access and those who don't. If companies could make a business case for delivering broadband to underserved areas, they would already be doing this. But this is too expensive. I see. So this is where the federal funds kick in. Uh, Yes. The federal government has stepped in with several programs to help the financial picture There are strict requirements to be met, such as minimum capacity, coverage provided, how much it's going to cost a subscriber per month. Some of the programs include the Department of Agriculture manage the Rural Broadband Program. The FCC runs the Rural Digital Opportunity Fund, or RDOF, with over 20 billion set aside to help rural communities. The recent infrastructure bill has an additional $65 billion allocated for high-speed internet. One of the best things about these programs is their intent to not only help the large U.S. operators, but also the smaller and more agile regional operator providers. Okay, so you mentioned operators. Um, Moving on to operators and consumers, how does FWA benefit these groups? Uh, That's a good question. For operators, it's an expanded customer base. And for some, those smaller regional companies I mentioned, it will have a significant impact on their bottom line. For subscribers, it will be the first time many of them have had any broadband access at an affordable price. Broadband access is increasingly being seen as a right, a necessary way to participate in today's digital world. And fixed wireless will allow these subscribers to receive an education, shop, be entertained, stay in touch with loved ones, and all the other ways people interact with each other online. That's really interesting. Now, on to the technical stuff. What frequency bands are being used for FWA? Fixed wireless can run on any band, but the two predominant ones in the U.S. are millimeter wave and CBRS at 3.5 gigahertz. Millimeter wave signals are normally situated anywhere between 26 gigahertz and 100 gigahertz. In the U.S., we use either 28 gigahertz or 39 gigahertz. These can carry a great deal of data, but only for short distances. On the other hand, the CBRS band is in the telecom sweet spot. It is able to carry a lot of data and carry it a long distance. We will see both of these bands being used in the coming years. You mentioned fiber a moment ago. 
can you tell me how does FWA compare to fiber to the home? Fiber is fast, but FWA will have sufficient speeds to please most people and be more affordable. It is not just the initial deployment of fiber to the home that is more expensive than FWA. It's also the ongoing maintenance. It's costly to send a crew to fix and find faults in buried cable, and who wants someone tearing up their yard in case of issues? FWA is less intrusive and it is less expensive to send a subscriber a new receiver. It sounds like FWA provides several benefits over fiber. Can you tell us more about how Samsung is involved in FWA? Kelly, Samsung has been working on FWA for a long time. We have been looking at it as far back as 2016. We wrote a white paper on what the future would look like. In 2018, we unveiled the first end-to-end 5G fixed wireless access commercial solution. The following year, we had fixed wireless access trials in Milan, Italy, and also a trial in Romania. In 2020, Samsung was a founding member of the GSA 4G, 5G fixed wireless access forum. This forum was put together to provide fixed wireless technology, products and services, and encourage global adoption. Last year, Samsung and Qualcomm worked together to break the speed records, reaching 8.08 gigabits per second for downloads and 711 megabits per second for uploads using the millimeter wave spectrum. These speeds are in line with what you might get with fiber. Vinay, thank you. This is all very exciting. It sounds like Samsung has a long history and is a pioneer in FWA. It's been a pleasure to hear from you. It sounds like FWA is a fascinating technology that will really impact people's lives. We're all anxious to see it develop. Uh, Thanks for having me, Kelly. And to our audience, thank you for participating in today's podcast. We look forward to seeing you next time on Networks Tech.